So it is early morning here in San Francisco. And I woke up early this morning with something on my mind. And I wanted to get it out because it has been on my mind for about a week now since I first spoke on camera about some, some troubles that were transpiring at the parent company of DC Comics. And this has been on my mind because as I was doing that live stream, I immediately started to see some comments in the chat. And then subsequently to that chat, I started to see people making comments. And uh, it's, it's so early over here that I'm not even turning the, the camera on because I don't have my camera ready face on. <laughs> but uh, we, we are one cup of coffee into the day, which is not a whole lot for me, but, but I woke up a little feisty uh, because this was on my mind and, and I needed to get it out. I needed to get it out. I normally get up at six, it was five this morning. I was like, you know what? I need to get up, I need to do this recording. So I come downstairs, I brew the coffee, and then I see a message from Pandora's box. Uh, Pandora's actually sent me a few days ago a uh, poll that was put up on his Instagram page about the topic that I'm going to talk about today. And he sent me the results. And so that was like the first thing that I saw after emerging from the warmth of my bed and, and waiting for the warmth of my coffee and caffeine to wash over me, I saw this poll that essentially said that 75% of people, and I do not know the total, 75% of people believed that Image Comics should buy DC. And I will tell you, um, I think this, this one, this one is, is a nuance to the earlier question or comment that I had seen from people that Marvel should actually buy DC Comics. And so I want to spend some time in this video, this recording talking about that, because I will tell you that on the surface, on the surface this seems like a good idea for Marvel to buy DC until you peel the layers back. And then you see that this would be disastrous. <laughs> it would be a disaster. I'll tell you that right now, disastrous. And, and this, is my, this is my opinion. This is my perspective. And I'm definitely encouraging folks to leave uh, respectfully their comments down in the comment section so that we can discuss this thing because I think that everyone will have their opinions on this, but what I will try to do over the course of this video is to share with you my thoughts on something like this. And, and not only will we talk about Marvel buying DC, we'll talk about some of the other companies that have also been mentioned, uh, whether they should buy DC Comics. So let's, let's dig into this thing. Before we get going, one of the things that I will tell you is that I don't think that AT&T, who is the ultimate parent company of DC Comics, will sell. I don't think that they will sell because they would be giving away all of the the rich content, the rich, you know, original content that sits within the 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 domain of DC Comics. So I don't even think that they would sell, to be honest with you. I think that there's a lot of things that they will do. Selling is not one of those things. So this is really, in my mind, a theoretical kind of conversation that we are about to have. But with that said, I think that the acquisition of DC by Marvel would be disastrous for many stakeholders, starting with consumers. I think that this would be disastrous. And I, and I say that because oftentimes fewer players in a market will lead to higher prices and also less quality because there is less competition. If you own the market, you dictate how the market performs. You dictate what the price is, what the standards are, and because you have no competition, you have that freedom to do that thing unchecked because there is no one else out there that can compete with you. And, it, and if you look at the numbers between Marvel and DC, they own the vast majority of the comic book market, right? They are one, two, two, one, depending upon the year that you are looking at. Marvel puts out a hundred or so titles 
in a given month, DC puts out, and, and I'm doing this, this rough numbers off the top of my head, so you definitely have my apology for that if I get some of this stuff wrong, but let's say that they put out 50 to, to 75. That is the lion's share of the comics that actually come out. When you look at the $1 billion that is out there in play, because that's the size of the comic book market, $1 billion. The vast majority of that is possessed by Marvel and DC. And so to combine one and two into one does not make sense. That does not uh, bode well for the consumer because Marvel at that point would be able to do whatever they wanted to do unchecked because they have all the power. If you want to pay $10 on average for a comic that is comprised of flimsy paper, then let's root for Marvel, right? And I'm a big fan of Marvel. I really am a big fan of Marvel. I just don't think that this is a good move. Now, people might be saying, because there are people out there that, that track some of the things that I say, they may, may listen to this and say, but don't you support Diamond? And I would say, I don't technically support Diamond. <laughs> I, have no, I have no stake in Diamond. But I have made arguments in the past as to, you know, the importance of competition. But yet when it comes to Diamond, I don't necessarily say that introducing some of these other distributors into the mix is a good move. And I say that because I don't understand how the new distributors that have been introduced actually will lead to innovation, which is what people are looking for, right? People want Diamond to have competition because they believe that through that competition, there will be innovation. My argument to that is that if a dollar is on the table and that dollar is getting divvied up amongst more people, that typically does not lead to innovation. That leads to cost cutting as that dollar gets divided up amongst more players. Now, if Diamond had the ability, or if distributors for that matter, had the ability to uh, set their own prices, if they could say, hey, I'm going to buy this comic from you, Marvel, from DC, from Image, from whoever else, and then I'm going to buy it at $2 and I can sell it for five or six or seven, then that would lead to some innovation because now they have the capital in order to actually be innovative. But if the price and the, and the money that they extract from the value chain is set for them by the publisher, then that doesn't necessarily lead to innovation because I do believe that that is what happens. A comic price is set by the publisher at let's say $3.99, $4.99. That money gets divvied up between the publisher, right, which goes to the creator, and then there is a, a portion of that, a small portion of that, that actually goes to the distributor. I believe that that is how it works. So it is not the distributor that is setting the, the price, it is the publisher, and the publishers are basically saying you can have these crumbs get my books out there for these crumbs. Again, that, and, and, and if the crumbs on the table are very few, having more people sit at that table and divvy up those crumbs does not lead to innovation. It leads to more cost cutting measures to cheaply and efficiently move comics out into the market. So that's why there's a little bit of a discrepancy there between what I think should happen with Diamond versus what I think should happen with the, the publishers. So hopefully, hopefully that helps uh, a little bit with the contradiction that people may hear if they are tracking the things that I say. So not only, again, is this thing, in my opinion, bad for consumers, I think that this is also bad for creators. And I say that it's bad for creators for several different reasons. One of the first is that creators would have less employment opportunities. If there are fewer publishers out there, there theoretically will be fewer jobs for creators. Because if you think about it, if Donny Cates is, is all the rage, why would you not want Donny Cates to work on your hottest books? And if your hottest books you know, sit with Marvel and DC, guess who's going to write them? right? And if Donny Cates is writing more books, then that means that there is less opportunity for the next creator who is trying to get into the market or for an up and coming creator 
to actually get in the mix. So I believe that having fewer publishers out there will lead to less employment opportunities for the creators that are out there. Now, let's flip it on the other side. We would definitely get some amazing stories. It would be dope to see Al Hewing uh, work on some of these DC properties, to see Donny Cates, to see, you know, many of these other creators that are doing some fantastic work at Marvel, to see them do some great stuff with these other characters and vice versa, because there's a lot of DC uh, creators, whether you're talking about artists or you're talking about uh, writers that are doing some really, really great work. And it would be cool to see them come on the other side. So I definitely get the argument if someone is looking at it through the lens of man my favorite creator is sitting on one side and if they had access to the other side that would be amazing so i definitely get that argument i definitely get that argument but again i, I think that it could lead to, to some not so good things happening but but then also let's be honest how many times have we seen a creator from marvel go to dc and maybe come back or start at dc and go to marvel and stay there or come back right so so i think it's important that these creators have these options to move around and to seek employment where it actually makes sense and we've seen that with with creators historically over time that have actually done that because they've been dissatisfied for one reason or another at one publisher and they went to some alternative options because they need that flexibility they need that competition to say i'm going to go work for the competition do you really want that they need that in my mind i think that they should have the option to go wherever it makes sense for them to go based upon their career obligations and and how they are being treated the other thing that i would say is that i, I think and I've kind of alluded to this already, that potentially by having fewer publishers, that would mean that there would be fewer creators. Fewer creators doing more work, in my mind, might actually lead to some stagnation. If everything starts to look the same, if everything starts to sound the same, I don't think that that's good for anybody. I mean, especially us as as consumers of these materials, if everything sounds like the house of mouse, if everything is a is a Marvel uh, method, then I don't know if that's good, right? The each one of these publishers out there has a unique voice and a long storied history that in my opinion should be maintained and should be separate, not combined into a homogenous thing where everything sounds the same. And think about it. There are people out there that believe that dependent upon the publisher, dependent upon the editor, there are certain things that are being done within comics that people don't like, right? And we're not gonna dig into some of that stuff, but, but, but imagine if there were fewer publishers and fewer creators, fewer editors, and something was being done under this umbrella that you did not like, think about how few comics might actually come out for you to enjoy. Because everything starts to sound the same. Everything starts to look the same. There is a tone to these things and you just happen to not like the tone for whatever reason. That does not necessarily lead to your enjoyment of this hobby and of comics. So not only is this thing in my mind bad for consumers and for creators, I think it's also bad for local comic shops. I think again that putting too much power in one company is not good because now that company again can dictate prices. They can decide what a local comic shop has to buy because they need to meet their numbers for Wall Street. They are dictating to them the prices and the quantities that must be purchased in order to get this variant, this ratio variant or that ratio variant. And this is something that a lot of people don't like. And I think, I think that a lot of this has changed over the last year or so. And if you don't like comic shops being forced to buy 12 or, you know, you know, a, a thousand copies of this horrible comic in order to get this really dope ratio variant. If you don't like that, then you don't want fewer 
publishers out there because that type of consolidation can lead to that type of strong arm techniques that I don't think benefits local comic shops. I think that we should also acknowledge the fact that DC Comics is doing some fantastic stuff. DC Comics is putting out some really good comic book content. Yes, they have fallen down when it comes to the movies and, and depending upon who you listen to, the TV shows as well, but I feel like the TV shows are a little bit better than the movies, but they are not bad across the board. There are some things that they actually need to improve upon, but there's some foundational things that they are doing well. And so I think it's important that we acknowledge that. I think it's also important that we acknowledge that what, at least what I'm seeing, the issues are not with DC Comics. The issues are with the parent company and specifically the strategic direction that has been decided upon by the parent company that is leading to some of what we are seeing. Again, DC on the surface of it is making money when it comes to the comics. The movies, not so much, right? Uh, but TV shows are kind of sort of there. But what we are seeing, and in, 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 again, from what I know today, the changes are not because DC is failing. Changes are because the parent company wants to go in a strategic direction and is streamlining and cleaning up things so as to improve profitability. But I, again, do not see that impacting DC Comics proper versus some of the streaming services. And again, by the time you guys see this video, uh, that may have changed. Uh, it may be changed now, and I'm just not aware of it. But again, these these are these are my um, these are my comments based upon the things that I appreciate about the situation. Now, as we talked about, there there were some people that called for Marvel to buy DC, and again, I think that that's disastrous. What makes a little more sense, honestly, is a smaller company buying DC. Smaller company, potentially like Image and Boom. Those are the two that I have seen floated out there. Now, this makes a little more sense because you're not combining one and two, you're combining, you know, three or four with two, which kind of sort of makes sense. But rarely do you see a smaller company acquire a larger company. Rarely, rarely do you see that unless that smaller company is just sitting on cash. And again, I'm going to make some assumptions here uh, about this next section. And again, you guys will be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but the way that Image Comics is set up, Image Comics, I believe, owns very little. The vast majority of what Image Comics actually owns is, is or what they put out is actually owned by their creators. It is a creator-owned company in the sense that the creators put out all of this fantastic content through Image, but Image does not own their creations. And because Image does not own their creations and, and have this rich uh, content to leverage, I don't know if Image actually has the financial resources to actually buy a company as large as DC Comics. I can tell you that AT&T is not going to sell DC. If they were to sell it, they are not going to sell that rich intellectual property for a low, low price. They are going to extract from that as much money as possible. And I don't know if Image has the financial resources to actually buy a company as rich an intellectual property as DC. And again, I could I could definitely be wrong about that, but oftentimes again, if you don't have assets, then you don't have the financial resources that can be leveraged for the purpose of a large acquisition. There's a reason why D, why Disney and AT&T and these large conglomerates can go out and buy things because they own everything. They own lots of assets and they can leverage those assets for the purpose of acquisition. But because they also have so many assets, they also have a ton of cash. 
sitting in the bank that empowers them and enables them to do business development deals to gobble up assets. I don't think Am Image has those types of resources. And you could make the same argument for Boom, which is even smaller than Image. And I think Boom is doing some really good stuff, as is Image. Boom, um, they're putting out good content, but Boom is tiny. Boom is tiny. I don't think they have the money or the wherewithal to actually purchase an entity as large as DC Comics. And again, I could I could definitely be wrong about that, but these these are my impressions. Now, here's the thing. I think that a lot of people are putting it out there that they want Marvel or DC or Image, I'm sorry, Marvel or Image or Boom Studios to actually buy Disney because they feel like in someone else's hands, DC Comics could be great. I would argue that DC Comics is not necessarily bad. They are putting out some good content. They have fallen down in a few different places. There's no doubt about that, but I don't think that Marvel or Image or Boom are the right partners to correct what is wrong and or broken, if you will, with DC Comics, DC Entertainment. In my mind, if someone is gonna do it, you need another large organization that has the financial resources, that has the interest in comics to actually buy DC Comics. Because you, you need somebody that appreciates the intellectual property that sits underneath DC Comics and can take that intellectual property and actually do something with it, can actually put out fantastic movies with that rich content. I don't think that these publishers out there have the resources to create what needs to be created to bring these characters to life, right? It, it took Marvel, Marvel Studios a decade, right? It took them time to build this stuff up. And that is, again, with lots of resources, if you will, at their disposal. So I don't think that this is an easy task. I don't think that this is a task that just anyone can undertake. I think that there needs to be a, a large company that makes a decision to get involved in this area and, and off the top of my head I, I don't even know of what that player would look like I, I really don't know what that player will look like but again I don't think that it's one of these small publishers I don't think that they have the capabilities the financial resources to 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 extract the value in a good way that um, a larger conglomerate would and a lot of people don't like AT&T a lot of people don't like Disney I, I get that I definitely get that. But, you know, in, in some respects, these large organizations are part of what has saved comics to some degree or another. Back in the 90s, I think it was 1996, when Marvel was basically going bankrupt and had filed for bankruptcy, they actually owe, owed Disney like $1.6, $1.7 million. The largest shareholder, I do believe at the time, of Marvel was Disney and and you know they were not going to survive Marvel that is and I think that that's part of why uh, Disney decided to buy them is because they saw some potential there look what has happened all of the fantastic movies and the streaming services that we get to enjoy all of this rich content uh, that is that is being displayed for us on the big screen and the little screen is is partly because of the trials and tribulations that Marvel went through and a large parent company kind of swooping in to, to assist, like a big brother with deep pockets. You can't go wrong with that. And again, I think that that is what DC needs. And, and maybe AT&T, again, is that right partner. Maybe what we need to do is to give AT&T and, and DC Comics and DC Entertainment some time to sort this stuff out, to, to make some magic happen. Maybe we just need to, to let them get through this restructuring that they're doing because maybe there is greatness on the other side the same way that Marvel has found its greatness. At the end of the day, I, I think that that's really all that we want. I don't think that we really care who owns it. Just do what is right by these characters and the creators and the local comic shops that are involved with 
this industry, do right by those things, put out fantastic content. And I don't know that people really even care who owns it, just do it the right way. So I think time will tell. Time will tell what happens with all of this. But I remain hopeful. I really do. I remain hopeful that all of this will sort itself out and we will emerge on the other side with a stronger, with a stronger you know, parent company and a stronger DC Comics and DC Entertainment. That is my hope. But again, I look forward to hearing what you all's thoughts are on this topic down in the comment section. Uh, that That is part of what I really enjoy is, is reading uh, the respectful comments that people leave behind uh, down in the comment section. So I definitely want to invite you to, uh, to participate. Let your voice be heard. Share your thoughts with us. And uh, as you share your thoughts, take a moment and read what your, your peers are saying on the, the video as well. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this recording. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to invite you to do that. That way you can stay abreast of all the content that I release on a weekly basis. And again, leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects, or you can send me an email to reggie at reggiecollects.com. Take care.